Good morning. Welcome to Edusat Network. Friend, as you know, today we are going to discuss social sector uh, in India. But uh, firstly, I would like to say sorry uh, for the delay and we will in today's lecture we will just do an introductory part of social sector uh, a uh, scenario in India. In, in, it is a kind of introductory lecture and tomorrow we will discuss in detail. And for discussion on this very topic, we have in the studio Dr. Sanjay Bhatt. He is a senior academician and presently professor in Delhi School of Social Work and has uh, experience of about 30 years. He has published a number of uh, um, research papers and books and been member of various uh, committee of, uh, of different academic institutions in the government of India and uh, keen interest in the working of the social sector in India. So I think his knowledge and experience will give us insight how to see this sector and what is the opportunity uh, for the uh, students and for the new uh, uh, students who are uh, taking the course of social uh, work in different uh, university. So I think uh, uh, this lecture will be helpful for us and with this uh, we uh, would like to uh, start the lecture and we invite um, uh, Professor Sanjay Bhatt for the Edusat lecture on this very topic. Welcome you sir. Thank you Amranji. Social work is a very important social sector is very important sector for any country. When we say social sector, we include many things, uh, education, social welfare, health. So when we talk of the social sector, there are government responsibility mainly to deliver the services and to deliver these services in more qualitative way more so that it reaches to all the people we involve the other partners also so government involves the voluntary sector also so in a social sector we have two major players the government and voluntary sector which provide the social services to the ordinary people of the country to the all people of the country now uh, you know there is a new talk and new dialogue and new terminology that's what we call public private sector so there is a third sector emerging which is called private sector uh, they are also willing to participate and government also want to promote the public partner public private partnership but public private partnership in social sector is not coming up up to the expectation of the government of india uh, maybe because of many other regions, they, it is successful in infrastructure, but it may not be successful into the social sector. So while we are talking of the social sector and running and delivering the services to the, in the social sector, what is more required? While we expect infrastructure from the government, we, we expect that government will provide that setup to uh, the institutions, but at the same time we require the personnel, people who will deliver the uh, these services and quality of services. So any field, whether it is a livelihood, whether it is a education, health, um, housing, whatever you take, you need the people, those who will be delivering these services. And to prepare these people, we have in our universities and colleges uh, certain courses in the social sciences. And one of the most uh, practical course, professionally designed, scientifically developed, is the course of social work education. Uh, social work education in India is uh, roughly 70 years old. And the social work, little distinct with what you call voluntary social work, the professional social work, provides the courses from graduation, what we popularly call BSW, Bachelor in Social Work, at postgraduate level, very popular course known as MSW, Masters in Social Work and many universities call them MA in Social Work. Then we have in a higher degree courses, MPhil and PhD in Social Work. So these courses are provided now across the 400 colleges and universities in the country. Uh, in fact, in last 10 to 15 years, the large number of colleges came up. 
the commitment towards the social justice and to commitment towards the social development especially within the framework of the human right has brought many issues on the forefront so social work people while they prepare the students for creating the social change accepting the social change transformative society the social work also addresses the issues of not only charity or welfare but the issues of the social justice and empowerment so it's not that we are doing something for the society or marginalized people of the society section of the society for the sake of doing or out of the only concern or out of the pitiable or charitable no it is it is a matter of pride to us that our democracy our country we have gone so far ahead that we ensure that all marginalized section of the society gets these services as a matter of their rights and when we talk of the rights we need to empower the people so social work basically addresses the issues of social justice and human right and as you know that when we talk about the social justice we have to go a wide range of the people wide range of the groups so groups ranging from the dalits ranging from adivasis um, the marginalized the specialized group the disabled people the construction workers the commercial sex workers many many others so social work basically addresses the social problems of the society on one hand encourages the social change on other hand promote the social justice and protect the human right so a wonderful subject when we when we talk about its practical or implementation way and this is a wonderful subject in the sense that it is two way beneficial what we call in hindi aam ke aam gutliyon ke dam a student when he studies this subject of course after passing out he will get a job but you also get a sense of satisfaction of doing something for others so two way that it helps you in achieving that sense that you are a party you are the partner in helping the other people and at the same time you earn the livelihood through this course so this wonderful course in another sense while we teach how to help others there are two issues why to help others nobody questions why we should not help others any say any specialized group we should help the others but how to help others is a very important thing so this course teaches the how the techniques the skill part of helping others without compromising their dignity without offending their dignity without making or without feeling that you are doing something which is uh, you are doing are not out of a concern or not out as a matter of right so these techniques which has been taught to the student in two years in this course on one hand make the person so sensitive it helps the person to develop his own personality and on the other hand you are delivering these services now beyond this point there are many concerned many people those who are concerned with knows that the problems are too acute too large certain people want to change the social structure bring social reform so many people joins that bandwagon so social work is one which has to take care of the social sector so many of our students they join the education they joins the community development environmental protection disaster management hiv aids women empowerment children juvenile justice a large number of areas where the social work people goes and they work for the betterment of the society okay so um, uh, this is an um, uh, in fact we want to know because now the uh, people as uh, students are getting more interested in social work uh, courses offered by the universities and other institutions so do you think that that those students who are coming they are genuinely feel for the society or helping others so uh, just for the um, you say the job they uh, want that's what coming what is that their motive in fact uh if you ask me frankly in last 
five years, when students join this course, many of them they do not know about this course and they are motivated by the title social work and sometimes they feel this is a very easier course, simpler course, they will be able to do it. Some students, those who know about the social work, they believe that this is a professional course and this will give them jobs, so they come directly for the job. But in the process of learning in two years, I believe if not all, roughly two-third or more than two-third, they un turn out to be the socially sensitive person. Okay. That's what the beauty of this course. So uh, as far as the job are concerned, I think this is the only course in the whole university system where a student gets 75 to 100 percent employment soon after passing out within Okay. Within, within two, so months. only in social tech sector, NGO or some other uh, uh, say corporate sector also recruiting people from the uh, social sector, uh, students who have done ma master or cert degree certificate in the social sector, so they are only NGO who are uh, offering the jobs to them. Look, okay. this is very is interesting. NGO or the corporate <coughs> sector? I tell you, this is very interesting. Mm -hmm. Social work is a course mm -hmm. which is based on the helping the people, okay. working with the people mm -hmm. and you will find when we say working with the people, we are trying to help, trying to provide the help at the time of problems, we are trying to help the people in their relationships, we are trying to help the people at the workplace. So you will see virtually every place where people are available, you need a social work person. So we have an employment opportunity with the, of course voluntary sector, NGOs are one major, but we have positions in government, mm -hmm. district social welfare officer, you must have heard about the ICDS, CDPOs, um, every government has, uh, state government has a social welfare department, child welfare department, so we have jobs in the government, but of late corporates have also started recruiting the social workers for managing their corporate social responsibility program. Okay. So, from everywhere, either it's the government or the private right, sector, right. or we say the corporate or NGO, Correct. all are offering job. So, it's a win-win situation for the students yes. who are yes. enrolling themselves in yes. the yes. social work courses. Yes. Uh, the second thing I'd like to know that because the uh, corporate social responsibility, uh, CSR, uh, that has been made uh, by the uh, law mandatory for all the corporate sectors, so how this will transform the entire scenario of uh, social work in the country? Okay, it's too early to make a comment on whether it will be successfully be ruling out the CSR. Mm -hmm. There are debate going on in this. But of course, the making 2% income in their previous uh, balance sheet mm -hmm. compulsory for the corporates to invest into the social responsibility program is in a welcome step and uh, we must appreciate with the problems and uh, kind of uh, issues we have in governance and other, other areas, this will definitely give the new direction to the social services and to the social sector. Now, uh, if I look at uh, long, after mm -hmm. some time, maybe four or five years, you will see mm -hmm. that corporate social responsibility will emerge as a new area of delivery of services. In government set up structure of social service, there is a restrictions. There is not much rigid flexibility, there is a rigidity. The structure you have made, a scheme you have made, you have to implement that scheme in that way. Right. But in corporate social responsibility, the biggest thing will be that it is a spearheaded by one unit, everybody is competing also, so they will be more innovative into it. How to provide health services, mm -hmm. the innovation will not come into the government system, but here it will come. Money, when they are investing, they know that their name is attached, mm -hmm. like Tata or like Reliance, their name is attached. Mm -hmm. So they would not like to get their brand name, you know, uh, brandist. So there will be much more monitoring, there will be much more uh, innovation, there which will be much more flexibility and CSR will cover the area definitely in and around wherever they are working, so they will they will go to the real people, okay. those who are needy. Mm -hmm. So I foresee that CSR has a long uh, scope, there is a long mm -hmm. scope and it will impact the society 
in many many ways okay, of course there are if and buts and we but can also yeah. say that this is the need of the uh, society oh yes very true you very true you said that this is need of the society and when many state government says we don't have money mm -hmm. i think this is one way to get generate the money and to uh, feed the programs okay so uh, now i'd like to ask you again the question from the student perspective who should join the social uh, work courses it's very simple i mean social work uh, can at undergraduate level any anyone who has passed out 12th code class he can join whether he is a 12th with arts science or commerce he can join there mm -hmm. are courses at undergraduate mm -hmm. level in delhi university there are two departments one is uh, with the ambedkar college bhimrao ambedkar college mm -hmm. and other for girls especially the aditi college there are two colleges but in india there are many colleges where means uh, in delhi university only two colleges are offering two colleges are offering degree courses degree courses at uh, graduate level okay. roughly 200 seats okay. so each college uh, each college okay. they, they you can uh, they can apply to hmm. but there is no restriction that they should be commerce arts or science anyone can apply okay so this is one about the bsw but at the msw level masters level any graduate can apply and i tell you uh, the new trend mm -hmm. which is emerging we are getting students from engineering we are getting students from medicine we are getting a student from physiotherapy Very nursing good. so that's mean that large number of students are coming from different field home science science commerce arts mm -hmm. and anybody can join it is this is a simple test we we take the aptitude test of the student whether mm -hmm. one has an aptitude for the social work or not mm -hmm. and across the country there are uh, the leading leading institute is tata institute of social sciences everybody knows so they also have the program they have roughly 13 15 programs which they have branched out from the social work now they have we started providing development studies mm -hmm. environmental science uh, disaster management so anybody can join after the graduation also uh, and uh, there is not much requirement mostly most institute ask 50% marks or some of the institute ask the 55% marks okay so i think anybody can join that and it's a, it's a, it's basically you need the aptitude mm -hmm. and if you uh, if you have that sensitivity in heart somewhere in the corner i think this knowledge base helps you in translating your ideas into the practice okay so um, uh, uh, what you teach to because this heterogeneous group are right, there right. so the teaching is also difficult so what yes, is the curriculum yes. uh, uh, you say the framework of cur curriculum you are the what constant you feel and what is the prospects amrendra ji you have asked very very relevant question mm. uh when i was saying we we work in so many areas children women disabled environment disaster management when we are working in so many areas the crux of this course mm -hmm. is that we work with the human being and we deal with the human relationship okay. so this course is a you can say in one way this is a applied form of most of the social sciences so what we have done mm -hmm. we have drawn best from psychology we have drawn best from the economics whatever minimum is required we have drawn from the sociology we have drawn from administration there is a paper from law there is a paper from administration there is a paper from environment science there is a knowledge from disaster management so what we have done that we have taken the knowledge from different disciplines okay and we try to make it more implementable how this knowledge can be applied when i say yes when we say child mm -hmm. we have taken some knowledge from the psychology now we have taken knowledge from psychology but while you are dealing with the problem of children how this knowledge is going to help you mm -hmm. so this is a very important that we work more on the how to apply the knowledge mm -hmm. to help the individuals okay so number of courses mm -hmm. number of courses and therefore we have a very integrated faculty and many departments also take help from the other social science department invite the people for uh, for joining them mm -hmm. like like i tell you uh, in last 10 to 15 years there is a new course in this program social work communication in media okay how to use communication mm -hmm. or media for spreading awareness about the social problem spreading awareness about the various kind of programs mm -hmm. like hiv aids like malnutrition mm -hmm. 
you want to work in villages and you want to tell the people that this is malnutrition. Now, how to design that campaign, you need the knowledge of the communication. Right. You need the knowledge of the media, mm -hmm. your sector. Mm -hmm. So, what we look forward, the knowledge anywhere in any form, which help us in delivering the objectives, we, we adopt that. Okay, very good. So, uh, first thing uh, that is uh, sensitivity. The second thing which I think the knowledge of different um, uh, stream that help you to make the people happy, to bring a smile on the faces of people. And the uh, third thing which is more important, economic part of it. Yes. How to manage that economic part of it if you are passing, pass out the, from the social work, uh, join any NGO and he comes to know that uh, NGO is fa facing financial crunch and it is asked mm -hmm. because I have noticed and some of the people uh, are working there uh, told me that um, we are asked to uh, raise the fund. So for that what kind of um, a skill, what kind of uh, training a student needs? Because I this is the first mm -hmm. thing because in media when we join the people are given a uh, uh, um, crime beat. So in that, uh, if we look at this way, in social sector, when anyone joins in uh, NGO, they are asked, you just raise the fund. So I will, I will, I will hmm. take one part hmm. ahead with this. Hmm. First of all, this course is very, uh, not very costly. Hmm. Even in the private universities like Amity and Galgotia, hmm. those who are coming up, hmm. the it is 25,000 rupees per semester to 40,000 rupees per semester. But in the university system and other, this course is 10,000 per year. Okay. So, so within 20,000 you get the master's degree. Mm -hmm. The second is the after the passing out, what are the job prospects and how much money they get. Mm -hmm. So in different sectors, they have a different packages. If you go to the government, you have a fixed grades. Mm -hmm. NGO sector of course has some problem but there are good NGOs and there are medium range NGOs, there are NGOs which are struggling. So the moment you join a NGO it depends the NGO's capacity to pay. We have our experience that from 15,000 to 50,000 is the pay packet mm. during the placement cell soon after pass out okay. that is that is the range which we have found mm -hmm. now those sometimes what happens that ngos are also dependent either on the government or on the foreign fund or on the charitable foundation funding mm -hmm. which gives the funding them to uh, project wise or uh, activity wise now in that case where uh, sometimes they don't have money so they also try to design the innovative programs and uh, they try, they also involve their employees into the fundraising programs. Now, fundraising, I tell you, is a, another area of the social work. Right. Many organizations simply do only fundraising. Mm -hmm. And many organizations raise fund for their themselves, like you take for the cry. Mm -hmm. Even UNICEF, they, they raise their fund. Uh, Amar Jyoti Society, mm -hmm. Deepalia, help age India, large number of people. So, some they have a conventional method of uh, raising fund, some have a very modern method of raising fund. But I tell you this is the area through your program I want to tell the people, fund raising is, is still very unexplored area in India. Okay. We hardly take reach out to the 3 to 5 percent of people, those who have a capacity to pay. And there are many people, those who want to give the fund mm -hmm. for the social cause, but we are not able to create that kind of environment and we are not able to assure the people that the fund which you are giving to us will be utilized properly. Because you know in society you have all kind of people, mm -hmm. good people, bad people, yeah. and uh, honest people, correct people. So NGO sector is also not different. I mean, you here also you have a large number right. of good people and some bad people also, but they spoil. One fish has spoiled the whole pond hmm. like that. But I think there is a enough space in the fundraising and some of the organization have started courses on fundraising also, how to raise the fund. Hmm. And there are agencies which are managing the fundraising program. So I think social sector is a very growing sector and time to come it is going to be 
one major area which will provide the employment okay. and uh, along with the employment the most satisfaction of the life right so uh, i think ma course is of four semester yeah so then the first uh, semester you offer only just uh, um, uh, foundation or the basics from the different uh, um, uh, different uh, streams yeah. and the second se uh, semester uh, um, what kind of training yeah, how the structure of this course is in? well hmm. look the pedagogy of hmm. the whole course hmm. is also designed very scientifically hmm. i tell you an interesting part which i have not touched so far hmm. we have when i said how we teach this the student from the day one so we have a two section in our course one is a theoretical another is a practical and this practical is not like that you go 10 days and do practical hmm. every week each student has to go a place and learn there what we called it field work okay so in six days program in six days week two days he goes to the one agency uh, child welfare agency women empowerment communities mm -hmm. we send there okay. now whatever we are teaching the students try to apply kind, it a kind of uh, exposure to different not only exposure okay. exposure is one that you went and you saw and you observed and you came back okay. here we ask them to do also okay. do by self and learn it so they are learned with the senior supervisor mm -hmm. and other structure is you rightly said in the first year since the students are coming from different stream we try to give them a package where the minimum basic conceptual clarity is created but slowly slowly as we go into the second semester third semester fourth semester we try to develop the specialization somebody is interested in community development mm -hmm. we will send him into the community development somebody is interested in women welfare we will send him into the women welfare so the papers there are 16 papers available mm -hmm. and out of which they can choose four papers mm -hmm. and then they, so we in Delhi university we have designed the courses like this that there is a knowledge course there is a skill course. Mm -hmm. So you have taken a knowledge course such as you have taken HIV AIDS with the people living with HIV AIDS mm -hmm. and then you have a course called counseling. Mm -hmm. So these two courses one is a knowledge course one is a counseling. Mm -hmm. You have a human relations and implies welfare as a one area. We also work with the people those who work mm -hmm. in organizations like industry and industrial organizations. Mm -hmm. So I mean they do have their problem workers have their other problem so how this counseling will help to them that kind so we have make a mix of the in total we provide 20 courses then we have a 900 hours field work in mm -hmm. two years then we have a rural camp then we have a winter placement then we have a summer placement we have a orientation program we we give them a rigorous training for uh, all this all these two years mm -hmm. that makes them to take up the job okay have you uh, noticed the person uh, who got enrolled uh, got enrollment uh, in the courses but after uh, yeah, in course of doing it sometimes they feel dissatisfied yeah mm -hmm. uh, don't want to continue with it it's percentage like, is? Uh, roughly five percent okay is a dropout okay when we admit 100 students, mm -hmm. 5 to 7 percent students. So 90 percent, 90 percent continue visits uh, uh, are quite encouraging. And number. we also yeah. encourage. Okay. We also encourage to drop them. Okay. Because mm -hmm. our our philosophy is mm -hmm. that you can run, you cannot ride on an unwilling horse. Okay. Secondly, you can bring a horse near to pond, mm -hmm. but you can't force him to drink. So there is no use of investing in a student for whom the course is not attractive okay. if he's not feeling from the mm -hmm. side but i tell you we have find so many students who says that we came into this course we find that probably we came at the wrong place but after three four days they started feeling yes we can do it okay. so we have a both kind of both kind of students okay so it's a good quite uh, uh, coming up areas and we think uh, in coming years also it will expand oh yes it has expanded in fact in last 20 years yeah it has expanded and by 1975 mm -hmm. we have 35 colleges and universities mm -hmm. 75 to 95 we reached 200 
and 95 to 2013 we have added another 200 okay so nowadays it is uh, it is increasing and uh, the demand for the professional courses also you know encouraging uh, the many universities like government of india has opened 16 central universities in past mm -hmm. i personally know that uh, 10 universities have opened the masters in social work program it's really good so, you know, we are reaching mm. to the mm. far places like uh, in Northeast. Mm. In Northeast, we have around 15 to 20 colleges and universities where we are providing social work. Mm. Uh, we have uh, these central universities in Himachal Pradesh, in Kisangarh, in Chhattisgarh. They have also opened social work. So, you know, what is happening that earlier this social work was the urban centric. Mm -hmm. Now it is also going to the rural centre. So ye, this is a very new trend and very upcoming trend. And the requirement in rural area is much more so really yes, we yes. should be happy. And well friends with this word conclude the today lecture. I thank all of you for watching the lecture and tomorrow we will discuss uh, uh, more aspect of the social work and uh, uh, if sir permits we will have a number of lectures in subsequent months and we will try to discuss the every aspect of social work what is being offered there, what is being taught there and uh, so that uh, not only the students who have got, got opportunity to uh, uh, study in the regular uh, university setup they will also come to know the person who really want to do the social work so with this purpose we certainly will have some more lecture in coming days so thank you very much thank for watching uh, the lecture and on behalf i uh, thank uh, uh, dr sanjay Bhatt for giving such a wonderful uh, uh, sharing his knowledge and experience thank you very much